I'd like to welcome you to Restoration Christian Fellowship Church Bible Study on uh, July 31st, 2024. I thank you for joining our broadcast on tonight. Uh, we're so glad you uh, took the time to um, uh, come and, and share in the Word of God on tonight. Uh, we continue in our study of uh, Living Kingdom Principles. Uh, tonight, we are going to continue uh, in that area. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about uh, Peter's confession and what these keys can do for us as far as our authority, amen, using these keys, amen, the authority of the kingdom keys is what we're going to talk about on tonight. Um, it's a very good lesson. I'm pretty sure you're going to be blessed by it. Um, so we just thank God. Once again, I thank God for our pastor being with us. And I know a lot of people are away on vacation and different areas. Um, but we just uh, continue on. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, that he will be in the midst. Amen. And he's uh, in the midst. And this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice. Amen. And be glad in it. So we're going to start uh, tonight opening up in prayer. And then we are uh, going to get started. Now, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you on tonight for this uh, beautiful day that you have made for us. We thank you for the rains that have come down and uh, replenished with uh, water, amen, the grass, the flowers, oh God. And we just thank you for who you are, oh God. And we thank you, first of all, for giving us your son, Jesus Christ, as our personal savior, making a way for us to be reunited with you, oh God. And God, we just thank you as we study this lesson on tonight that something will be said to bless you. Um, and bless us and to encourage us in our hearts, amen, to continue traveling down this road with you. So, God, we first repent of anything we may have said or done outside of your will, and we just thank you for forgiving us and placing us in right standing. We welcome your spirit into this class on tonight, oh God. God, we thank you for our pastor joining on tonight, oh God. We thank you for uh, my wife and all those who are joined throughout the class and those who will view this in the future. So, God, we thank you, oh God, as we're learning, oh God, about how to apply your kingdom principles to our lives. Oh God, we just pray, oh God, that you just be in the midst as we continue learning about um, the position that um, we have now in you. God, we lift up our nation to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, amen, for our government. Uh, um, the White House, oh God, uh, President Biden and the staff, oh God, we lift up, oh God, our federal, local, and state governments as well. And God, we just pray, oh God, uh, for this uh, upcoming election, oh God. God, I know the next few days we're going to be bombarded, amen, with uh, this or that being said on um, through TV, through news media, some false, some real. So we just pray, oh God, that you will guard our hearts and our minds, oh God, as we Go through this election uh, phase, and we pray, oh God, that we will vote, amen, according to the Bible and not just on uh, popularity or what someone can do for us, but we will vote according to your word in the name of Jesus Christ. So, God, we pray for our um, country once again. We pray against all this, the violence and the the, 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 the violence that is happening, um, the robbing, stealing, killing, oh God, unnecessary killing, oh God. Oh, God, we just pray, oh, God, for um, that spirit of lawlessness, oh, God, to be uh, stopped in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray that your spirit will just take over and have its way in the name of Jesus Christ. And, God, we also pray for uh, our church, Restoration Christian Fellowship Church. We pray for our pastor once again. We thank you for her. We thank you, oh, God, for the vision that you placed in our heart for this part of the vineyard. And, God, we just thank you for her longevity. And we just thank you, oh, God, for um, just her just being um, motivated to continue traveling down this road and being um, being led by you to lead us as our pastor. We thank you for the members of Restoration and the members, the uh, members, leadership, uh, ministers, um, elders, deacons, everyone in their rightful place, God. We just thank you for them on tonight. And we pray, oh God, that we will continue to be united, oh God, that we will not, oh God, um, fall apart or um, or. Uh, gossip, backbite, oh God, uh, but we will stay connected and doing the things that you called us to do at Restoration. We pray for the friends of Restoration as well. We lift them up to you on tonight, oh God. Anyone that is sick, oh God, we pray for them, all those that are sick and shut in. In the name of Jesus Christ, we lift them up to you and we pray, oh God, that you will heal them and deliver them and set them free, God. And God, we pray, oh God, as I'm praying for our church, oh God, God, we bind the hand of the enemy from his attack against our church, oh God. God, we know that you are doing great things at restoration and you just, the enemy is mad at what's happening. So God, we know that we are not fighting against uh, flesh and blood as we learned, but we're fighting against principalities. So we bind those principalities, oh God, we loose your spirit, oh God, like never before in our church, oh God. God, we continue to pray for souls being saved, lives being changed, oh God, families being united, oh God, marriages being saved, husbands, wives, oh God, 
uh, brought back together, oh God. Children reunited with their parents, oh God. Drug addicts saved, oh God. Alcoholics saved, oh God. Cancer healed, oh God. Diabetes healed, oh God. Thyroid problems, oh God. Eye problems, oh God. Blood disorders, oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that they will continue to happen at restoration. Even though the enemy don't want that to happen, we pray, oh God, that your spirit will remain fresh and alive at restoration like never before, oh God. We pray once again for those from the North, East, West, and South, oh God. Send, oh God, laborers that, that will take part in this vision that you've given our pastors, oh God. And God, we pray, oh God, that um, as they come in, jealousy will not um, uh, 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 start or any issues will start, but we will just welcome those that will come in. Every gift, oh God, that's needed and necessary for the vision, oh God. We thank you for sending it, sending them, and we thank you, oh God, for those gifts being in action at restoration. And God, once again, we just thank you, oh God, for those that are um, uh, uh, battling um, sickness and disease. We thank you for saving them and healing them. And God, we just ask you, oh God, just, just be in the midst of our class on tonight and just have your way once again. And we just welcome your spirit through these airways. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. <clears throat> amen. So we just thank God um, on tonight. We're going to uh, continue our study of uh, 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 living godly principles. Um, kingdom principles. Uh, last week, we uh, ended with talking about um, having a kingdom mentality. And that's so, so vital um, because if you do not believe in what we're talking and sharing, it cannot work for you. Amen. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about on tonight. How Peter's confession, amen, opened the door for him uh, mightily to be used by God. And and and, and there's a uh, key, but that key was not just for him, but it was for the disciples and us as well. So I'm going to be reading, um, starting off with Matthew's uh, chapter 16 on tonight. Now I'm going to be reading um, a little different. I'm not going to go word for word off of the uh, the lesson plan that I sent. I'm just going to break it down each um, one of those verses all the way down to loosing and binding on tonight. So if you can just follow along, it's going to be more of a lecture on tonight. And then if you need to go back, you can go you can go back to our key points that are, that's in the handout that I sent out. But I just felt led to do it this way, so I wouldn't have to keep breaking it down each time. So I'm just going to go through each of the next uh, four points there, starting on um, Lesson 2, Part 1, the authority of the Kingdom Keys. Uh, we're going to go all the way down to binding and loosing on tonight, um, and we're going to go from there. So starting out on tonight, uh, let me get the page up here on my screen. Like I said, it's going to... Each one of those is going to follow along and you'll know where I'm at because each time I will uh, let you know where I'm at. Um, starting um, reading verses uh, Matthew chapter 16. Uh, Lord, I just thank you for clarity and I thank you for binding all distractions. And I just pray that you uh, get your way through this class on tonight. Matthew chapter 16. I'm going to start reading at verse uh, 15 on tonight. Amen. Um, actually, 14. Matthew 16. I'm going to start reading at verse 14 through 20. And those verses read, and they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jer Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, Perjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. And our uh, verses, key verses tonight is 18 and 19. And I say also unto thee, thou, um, unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. Those are our founding scriptures on tonight. 
and uh, we're going to go from there. Uh, how confused the multitudes were about Christ. They held him in high esteem, uh, ranking him with the great prophets, but they lacked the perception to see him as the son of the living God. They even compared him with John the Baptist. Yet these two dissimilar in their ministries. Uh, Matthew uh, chapter 11 and uh, verses 18 and 19 says this, for John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he had a devil. The son of man uh, came eating and drinking, and they say, behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. Amen. But no man, that was Matthew 11, verses 18 and 19, but no man can confess Christ apart from the revelation of the Father. Matthew eleven twenty seven, 27. Matthew 11 and 27 says this, And all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Amen. But no man can confess Christ apart from the revelation of the Father. Uh, that's uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 27. Um, and that reads, amen, um, all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Amen. But no man can confess Christ apart from the revelation of the Father in the witness of the Spirit, 1 Corinthians uh, 12 and 3. Amen. And 1 Corinthians 12 and 3 says, Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Amen. That was Matthew 11, 27, 1 Corinthians 12, 3. A right confession about Christ is important to salvation. Now, when I first start off tonight is talking about how Peter Amen. He had a revelation of who Christ was. Amen. And that revelation was revealed to him by, by God the Father. Amen. By the Spirit. Amen. This was not something, amen, that um that just came to him, but the Spirit revealed Christ to him. And that's why he was able to say that he was the Christ. Amen. And that and that's something that we gotta um grab hold to, amen. Because the spirit and each one of us have um made the connection, amen, with when God's word was spoken to us to be saved, amen, and we realized, amen, that we were sinners and we were lost and we needed Christ in our lives, amen, and when we confessed and we um, uh, made him Lord of our lives, amen, that spirit uh, came alive within us, amen, that's the same thing that, that, that happened with Peter during that time, amen, that he came alive, the spirit spoke to him, and he was able to say, no, uh, he's not Elias, he's not John the Baptist, amen, he's Jesus the Christ, amen. And when he said that, Jesus said, um, uh, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father, which is in heaven, uh, revealed that to you, amen. And that's, once again, referring to how we're going to walk in the kingdom, amen, that we're just not going to walk according to our way, but we're going to walk according to the, the way Christ wants us to walk and how he wants us to hear from heaven, amen. So going a little further I want to talk about the rock, and that rock is Jesus Christ, amen, um, and I'm going to slow down so you can get these scriptures, because I'm going to read them to you, uh, the rock is Jesus, Christ said so in Matthew chapter 21, verse 42, um, referring to Isaiah 28 and 16, he was referring to um, Christ coming, and that Christ was going to be the rock in those two scriptures, Peter himself said so in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 8, also, Paul names Christ as the rock in 1 Corinthians 10 and 4 and calls Christ the head of the church in Ephesians 1, 20-23. Amen. Throughout the Old Testament, the rock speaks of God, not man. Um, Deuteronomy 32 and 4. Jesus said, you are Peter. Amen. And that word Peter there is Petros, a small rock. Amen. And on this rock, amen, Petra, and that word Petra means a large rock or foundation. And that 
On that foundation, I will build my church, not on a small rock, Petrus, which is Peter, but on Pe Petra, P-E-T-R-A, the large foundation. And that large foundation, amen, is Jesus Christ, that he will build his church, amen. So it's important to understand that the rock here is Jesus Christ and not Peter. Peter, amen, was going to uh, build on the rock of Jesus Christ, not on, amen, a small rock but the large rock, which was the Petra is called, and that was Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, continuing on, the keys that are mentioned here, the keys mentioned here refer to Peter's stewardship and the kingdom. These are not the keys up to the church, but the keys to the kingdom. Amen. They're not, amen, the keys to death or eternity, for Christ holds those according to Revelations 1 and 18. And Revelations 1 and 18 reads, I am Amen. He that lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. In the Bible, keys stand for authority and stewardship. Amen. Um, Isaiah 22 and 22 says, And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open and none shall shut, and he shall shut and none shall open. Isaiah 22, 22. Peter, and I love this. Peter used these keys when he opened the door of faith in Acts 14, 27. Amen. Uh, and when they uh, were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. Amen. Um, and that was, once again, Acts 14, 27. That's where he opened, amen, the doors, amen, to the kingdom, to the Gentiles, amen. Then we find in, in Acts chapter 2, and I'm sorry, to the, yeah, to the Gentiles, and then in Acts 2, uh, to the Jews, and then in Acts 8, amen, to the Samaritans, amen. And, um, and uh, what I love about that is Peter, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, Peter had these keys, and the keys were the kingdom. And he, were able, he was able to be used to open the kingdom to the Gentiles, to the Jews, and to the Samaritans. Amen. And it wasn't keys, amen, to uh, more uh, money or financial situations or uh, to a denomination, to a church, or to a fellowship, or to this or to that. But it was to the kingdom of God. Amen. And, and, and what we find is um, this is stewardship and not lordship. So what uh, Peter began to do is steward what God had placed in his hands with those keys to open and close the doors, amen, to the kingdom. So he stewarded those um, keys and that relationship that he had with, with, with the son, Jesus Christ, and with God to those in those um, particular um, uh, races of people. Once again, Peter was that one who opened the doors, amen, once again, to the Gentiles, to the Jews in Acts 2, to the Samaritans in, in 8, amen. Um, and also to the Gentiles in Acts chapter 10 as well. Amen. So we see once again, the keys, amen, are not keys to the church, but they are keys to the kingdom. And we are referencing what I'm referring to is our opening scripture, Matthew verses, uh, Matthew 16 verses 15, amen, through 20. Amen. Um, next, after we talk about the keys, I want to look at um, binding and loosing. Uh, this implies, amen, applying God's word to people. In Matthew 18, 18, this is used of church discipline and the power um, is given to all the disciples, not just Peter alone. In Jesus' day, the Jews spoke of binding and loosing. When a rabbi would forbid something or permit something, the more accurate translation is in the Williams translation of the New Testament. Whatsoever you forbid, glory to God, whatsoever you forbid on earth must be what is already forbidden in heaven. And whatsoever you permit on earth must be what is already permitted in heaven. I'm going to read that uh, one more time. In Jesus' day, the Jews spoke of binding and loosing when a rabbi would forbid something or permit something. The more accurate translation is in the Williams translation of the New Testament. Whatsoever you forbid on earth must be what is already forbidden in heaven. And whatsoever you permit on earth must be what is already permitted in heaven. 
The church does not tell heaven what to do, but obeys on earth what heaven commands the church to do. Glory to God. Read that last point one more time. The church does not tell heaven what to do, but obeys on earth what heaven commands the church to do. Amen. And as we continue on, binding and loosening, we, we have to have faith. Amen. Uh, verses 7, um, yeah, verses uh, uh, 20 talks about um, uh, the faith, amen, and power. The great power of faith is promised. The Jews clearly understood what Jesus meant by removing mountains. The phrase was a Jewish uh, proverb, meaning to remove difficulties. Uh, Zechariah 4 and 7 says, Who art thou, O great mountain? Before, Z Z before Z Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, grace, grace unto it. 1 Corinthians 13 and 2 says this, And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountains and have not clarity, amen, I am nothing. The greatest difficulties in human life can be removed by faith. Prayer and faith can do anything for God. They can remove all kinds of mountains, fear, disappointments, depression, despair, sickness, temptations, guilt, uh, worry, loneliness, persecution, heartache. All these mountains, amen, can be removed by faith, amen, and believing, amen, um, by um, praying, by fasting, by having, amen, a relationship with God, believing God's word, these mountains can be removed out of our lives, amen. But if you do not believe that they can be removed, uh, uh, they will not be removed. They will remain. If you say that you're sick and you don't quote God's word that tells you that you are healed and by every strike that he took on his back that you are made whole, amen, you're going to uh, allow that sickness to take root and take over. But if you claim and believe God's word and speak his word and, and, and use that principle that is in his word, once again, Jesus, when he was uh, tempted by the, by the devil, amen, he never um, uh, tried to pull out any theology or anything from uh, left field or from a denomination. He just quoted back the word of God, amen. And, and, and something I read the other day that really blessed me when I was looking at that temptation of Jesus Christ, that when... The temptation, the last thing that, that he tempted Jesus with, and Jesus quoted the word back that I, I'm going to um, live off of God's word. The, the Bible says the devil ran. I never saw that before. Then that's what happens. Amen. The devil flees. Amen. When you are have faith in God's word, depression has to flee when you have faith in his word. Disappointments flee when you have the, the faith to believe that it will go away. Sickness, guilt, worry, loneliness, persecution, heartache. Go so in the name of Jesus Christ. When we put the word back on it, we must have faith, amen, and believe that those mountains can be removed, amen. Now, uh, before I uh, read this scripture, I'm going to um, share uh, my screen with you, and I just want you to see this. I came across it. Um, uh, talking about uh, faith and talking about faith as a mustard seed. So let me uh, bring this slide up. And I want you to catch this because this is so profound. Amen. And those who have joined, as stated, just uh, read along. I am um, doing a, a lecture form on today. Those notes that I've given you, I'm just going one by one through those notes, and then we will review at the end of the lecture. Um, but I wanted to share this with you because when I came across it, it blessed me, and I said, I have to share this with the class on tonight. Amen. And uh, this is referencing uh, what you're looking at here is referencing um, uh, faith as a seed of a mustard seed. Amen. And we see how small a mustard seed is there. Uh, this is uh, mustard seed, this little seed and this little fingers here. Do you see how small that is? But when you have faith, like this little mustard seed here, it can grow, amen, like this tree. 
and this tree they say can grow almost uh 30 40 feet or more and uh 60 to 80 feet not 80 but 60 to 50 to 60 feet wide and about uh 40 to 50 feet high amen that a mustard seed can grow into a tree but if you take the seed an uh, initial seed is so small that you would never think something like this can come of it and that's what jesus was quoting in this in in that in that um in that proverb there not proverb but in that um uh, saying there that if we have the faith amen if you just have a faith as the size of a mustard seed, nothing will be impossible for you, amen, if you can have faith as that little seed. If you have faith as that little seed, amen, you can uh, uh, believe God for your healing. You can believe God for your financial situation. You can believe God for your marriages. You can believe God for your children to be saved. You can believe God for your our church to explode. We can believe God, amen, for, um, for the finances necessary to, um, to continue working and doing the things in the kingdom of God like never before. If we just had that little seed, you can believe God for a job that you don't even qualify for because you have faith in his word and faith in what he can do for you. That faith, amen, can turn into the, a tree that is blooming and growing because nothing will be impossible for you if you can just have faith. That's that little bit of faith, amen, will cause great things to happen in our lives. Amen. So I just wanted to share that picture with you. Um, that little seed grows into this great big old tree. And that's what Jesus is saying in his word, that if you can just have faith as that little seed, amen, and believe, amen, in him and believe in his word, nothing shall be impossible for you. And that's the same thing he was saying to his disciples. Nothing will be impossible for you if you just have the seed the faith uh, as a seed of a mustard seed. Amen. Um, stop right there. This is when, you know, you got to have somebody um, like Destiny running on the background, sharing their screens and doing stuff for you. Uh, that What I was quoting to you is coming from Matthew 17 and 20. And Jesus said unto them once again, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence, to yonder place, and it shall remove. Nothing shall be impossible for you. What does Christ mean by faith as a grain as a mustard seed? Once again, the mustard seed was known for its small size, the smallest of all plants, yet it grows to be one of the largest trees of bushes, according to Matthew 13, 32, which says, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge and the branches thereof, amen. Picture a mustard seed lying in a person's hand, as I showed you, it is, a, it is real small. Uh, just imagine the potential for the growth and use. So it is So it is without faith, as it has to be as a grain as a mustard seed. It is real and small, yet it has enormous power for growth for us to use, um, not just for ourselves, um, but for ourselves and for ministry. Matthew 21 and 22 says, In all things whatsoever you should ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. Matthew 21, 22. And Mark 9, 23 says, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Mark 9, 23. And I want to uh, talk about prayer portion of our handout on tonight that's coming from john 14 12 through 14 uh god um jesus has given us the privilege of prayer uh john 14 12 through 14 says this verily verily i say unto you he that believeth for me the works that i do shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because i go unto my father and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that will i do that the father may be glorified in the Son, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. While he was with the disciples, Christ supplied their needs. John 16, uh, 22 through 24 says, And ye know, therefore, uh, I'm sorry, and ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your hearts shall rejoice, and, and your joy no man taketh from you. And in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it unto you. Hereto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Now that he was returning to heaven, he gives us the uh, gives the disciples the privilege of prayer. He promises to answer prayer that the Father may be glorified. To pray in his name means to pray for his glory, asking for whatever he himself. We must catch that when we are praying, amen. He promised to answer our prayers that the Father might be glorified, but to pray in his name means to pray for his glory, asking for whatever he himself will desire. The greater work spoken of in verse 12 refers to the wonderful miracles and blessings the disciples experienced as recorded in the book of Acts. Also in Mark chapter 16 and 20. In closing this part of the class on tonight, the works he does through us today are greater in the sense that we are mere human vessels while he was God incarnate ministering on the earth. Amen. I wanted to um, start that way tonight because I just felt led when I was studying and reading um, as stated what I was uh Holding and reading back to you was all here. The authority of the kingdom keys. I started off with uh, uh, Peter, um, how Jesus told him um, in the point one there, the foundation of authority and all. I'm inside, and I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom and heaven. Whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatsoever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Once again, Jesus grants authority to Peter, symbolizing the church's authority, not Peter's authority. The keys of the kingdom represents the power to bind and to loose, understanding the significance of spiritual authority in the kingdom. We must understand, amen, that we have spiritual authority in God's kingdom, amen. And we get this um, kingdom authority by exercising our faith. In Matthew 17, 20, once again, it says unto them because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, I'm sorry, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove and nothing shall be um, impossible for you. Faith is essential for exercising kingdom authority. Amen. We must have faith, amen, to exercise our kingdom authority. Amen. Even a small amount of faith can accomplish great things, amen. Many of us probably can attest how we have put our faith, amen, toward things, amen. And it started off, amen, with little things, and God showed himself faithful in those little things, and uh, things uh, uh, even uh, it, it gravitated to great things, but it started off with a small, amen, just a small amount of faith, believing God for that small thing, and he did it for us, amen. The relationship between faith and authority Amen. Is given by the keys. Amen. So once again, our, the relationship, uh, faith, we got to have faith and believe, amen, and authority that is given to us through the kingdom. Once you have this faith and you believe, amen, in the kingdom authority, amen, you can then accomplish great things for God. As long as we do not have faith in what God's word says can happen for us, amen. Once again, that's a key on a key ring, amen, that has no purpose. You don't know what it's used for. You don't know what it opens. You don't know what it unlocks. Amen. Because you don't, first of all, don't know. But once we start learning about God, we start learning his word, we start praying, we start fasting, we ask God to reveal, amen, who we are. And he reveals himself to us. Amen. We, re we realize that we sons and daughters of the most high God. And then it, we, we understand that he has given us authority as well. Just as he gave the disciples authority, he's given us authority. Amen. And we exercise that authority by faith. So we believe by faith when, when pastors or elders, amen, even yourself lay hands on the sick and they shall recover by faith we're believing, amen. Uh, when we put our, set our faith, amen, uh, to do great things for God in the kingdom, amen, we, we, by faith we're believing that it's going to happen. We're exercising kingdom authority. When we go into our workplace and the foul spirit is, is existing, amen, and you take hold of that that, that office, amen, where you say, the, I plead the blood of Jesus, amen, you're taking kingdom authority over that situation. Even, 
amen, in arguments uh, with, with each other, with family, with husbands, wives, with people, amen. You can take authority over those situations, amen. And all it takes is a small amount of faith to believe, amen, that, amen, you can accomplish great things for the Lord. Uh, my third point on, on the sheet tonight is authority and prayer, which I covered. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Uh, praying in Jesus' name is key to accessing the kingdom of God. And that's the, uh, as they say, the master key. Amen. Um, that master key opens, amen, us to the kingdom of heaven. It it opens us up, amen, that we can um, get into the presence of God. Um, uh, it, it gives us, amen, the rights to the to the kingdom, amen, because we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And uh, and he has made the connection for us to get back in connection, right standing with our Father God. The Bible tells us, amen, that, um, that no one, amen, can get to heaven unless, amen, they go through his son, and that son is Jesus Christ. So when we pray, Amen. We're praying in Jesus' name. So we access in kingdom, in kingdom authority in Jesus' name. And that's why I said earlier, we can go into our workplace and say, in Jesus' name, amen, this office line up, amen. And our marriages, this marriage line up in Jesus' name because we're accessing that kingdom authority through the name that is above every name, that name, amen, that every knee shall bow and call out, amen. That name is Jesus Christ, amen. So we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. And that name, amen, once again, gives us access to kingdom authority. Amen. The promises of prayer answered, amen, can be answered when it's aligned with God's will. So we just not praying amiss and we're not asking for stuff, amen, that, that, that is not aligned with God's will. But when we pray, amen, we're praying God's word and we're praying God's will and we're not um, trying to um, uh, ask for things, amen, that that, that really, as they say, money uh, came by, but we just not asking amiss, amen, but we asking on, amen, on purpose, amen. We asking, amen, in Jesus' name, amen, and the promise of answered prayer is a, uh, is promised, and it comes to, to, to um, it comes to us when it's aligned with God's will. We don't want to pray outside of God's will, but we want to pray in God's will. And then praying in God's will, we always include, we praying in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Understanding um, there is power, amen, and once again, in responsibility of prayer. Man, we must understand that there, that there is power and there is responsibility in prayer. Amen. We just don't always want to pray for ourselves, amen, but we want to pray for as many people as possible, Pray for our nation, pray for sick, homeless, uh, pray against abortion, all these different things. We have power, amen, to bind and to loose and to call, amen, heaven to earth, amen, and we do it with responsibility, and we use that um, responsibility in our prayers, amen. So I think I had one more thing I wanted to share, and that is uh, binding and loosening. I know that goes into the next lesson. But I wanted to uh, uh, talk about that real quick, and then we're going to stop, and we're going to open up the floor for questions, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, okay, uh, binding and loosing, amen. This implies applying God's word to people. In Matthew 18, 18, this is used of the church discipline. And the power is given to all the disciples once again, make Peter alone. In Jesus' day, Jesus spoke of binding and loosing. And I think I read this earlier. When a rabbi would forbid something or permit something, the more accurate translation is in the Williams translation of the New Testament, which says, whatsoever you forbid on earth must be what is already forbidden in heaven. And whatsoever you permit on earth must be what is already permitted in heaven. Heaven. The church does not tell heaven what to do, but obeys on earth what heaven commands the church to do. Amen. And that goes back to Matthew 18, 18. For early I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Practical application of binding and loosing, loosing 
we must have a understanding and we must understand how to apply, amen, the principles of binding and loosing, amen. And we must use this authority, amen, in our spiritual warfare, in our daily lives, amen. And that's when I said uh, earlier, I go back, I keep saying the workplace. I'm not sure why I keep saying the workplace, but in anywhere, amen, you can bind and you can loose, amen. Uh, you can bind, amen, the hand of the enemy over your finances, amen, and you can lose financial freedom. You can lose health, amen, because health is in heaven, amen, and it's not something that is unreasonable, amen. You can lose, amen, friendships. You can lose all the things, amen, that is permitted in heaven. We can lose and we can bind, amen, but we don't want to get into, amen, and forget that um, this authority is given for our spiritual warfare, in our daily life, amen. We're fighting each and every day against a spiritual spiritual principalities, amen, in high places, amen, that is coming against us. And that's what we're fighting. We we, we, we finished that in Ephesians 6, where we were talking about, amen, and our, uh, our spiritual warfare. And I believe right now, as I, as, um, as our church um, is growing and, and things are happening and changing, I said that in our prayer that the enemy is mad and coming at our church, amen. That's where we can now we can bind the hand of the enemy. Lord, uh, we pray in Jesus name that you bind the hand of the enemy in this attack against our church attack. We bind this attack against our marriages, against our young people. We bind. Amen. We bind and we loose. Amen. The spirit to move mightily at our church. We loose. Amen. Love and friendship and care in our homes and our marriages. Amen. So you can understand the application of binding and loosing. Amen. We have this authority. And it's designed to help us in our spiritual warfare in our daily lives. Amen. It's not just uh, pull it out the woodworks, but daily. Amen. We have that right and 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 um, privilege of amen of binding and loosing. Amen. And once again, whatever amen you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. So I'm going to start right there on tonight. Um, I thank God uh, for your participation. I know I was a little bit uh, different on tonight because I was reading more of a lecture form, but I just was uh, just doing it that way on tonight. I'm going to um, uh, share my uh, some slides with you all uh, in closing on tonight, and then I'm going to open up the floor for discussion, um, and then we're going to go from there. Amen. So as we reflect on tonight, amen, my question uh, to the group on tonight is this, amen, what are the benefits of using the keys to the kingdom? Amen. Um, as I went through some of those keys on tonight, some of those principles on tonight, what are the benefits of using the keys of the king, kingdom, using the keys to the kingdom of God? Uh, anybody will take a shot. And also, if whatever you got out of the lesson so far, you can comment on that as well. What are the benefits of using the keys to the kingdom of God? Yes, Sister Ricky. Uh, the benefits of using the keys to the kingdom of God is, is just that. It's to the kingdom of God. Um, and this might answer that, and you might go into another question that this answer is for as well. I was thinking when you were talking about the master key, um, even thinking about in the workplace, if you have, this one has the key to the, this, and this one has the key to this office and so and so, but the one that's in charge has the keys to everything. And so the benefit of using the keys to the kingdom of God is that he's in charge of everything through Jesus Christ. We have access to everything that God has for us. And so he has the master key. He's not the little person or the this or the that, the side guy that just has the key that gets you only so far. He gets you where you need to go. Yes. Amen. And that's, once again, the master key. Jesus is that master key. And um, you can go to him. Amen. And you don't have to go to multiple people. But you can go right to Jesus, which is the source and that master key that can get you into to the kingdom principles and kingdom areas that can benefit your life. Uh, anybody else would like to um, answer? Yeah. 
Amen. Okay, I'm going to move on. Um, using the keys to the kingdom of God brings profound benefits. Amen. Using the keys to the kingdom of God brings prof uh, profound benefits. Um, anyone would like to uh, chime in on what benefits that um, using the keys to the kingdom could bring to you? What some of those benefits could be? I'll go. Yes. For me, um, it's having authority um, as far as having the confidence in God, knowing like who and whose you are and just living a life of confidence because, you know, God's taking care of you and you walk with authority because you know that you're his child and you're part of his kingdom um, and he's in control. So for me, it's just having an authority and a confidence knowing I say confidence, like, because, you know, your your confidence comes from him. Um, that's a benefit to me that I I see personally for myself. Amen. Amen. And that's a good uh, uh, point. Um, I would say Sister Destiny. Um, yes, that's a very good point um, that, that you uh, made there, because um, as long as you don't believe that you have this authority, it's not going to work for you. And once you have that confidence and knowing who you who you are and whose you are, now you can walk in those kingdom principles and bring about change in your life using these kingdom keys that we've been talking about these last few weeks. Uh, Pastor, did you want to say something? I saw your mic mute, unmuted. Yeah, I'll just hold off for now. <laughs> uh, because uh, what I was going to say has already partially been said, you know. Oh, and okay. I was, yeah, that's why I was just be repeating pretty much. Oh, okay. I okay, did all anybody... what, I did all what <laughs> has been said. <laughs> oh, yes. That's Sister Ricky and Sister Destiny. Yes. Okay, um, moving right along. Um, my first point in closing out tonight is um, some of the benefits is what uh, Destiny and Ricky was sharing. We have access to divine authority and power. Believers can operate in the authority of Jesus Christ to overcome spiritual battles, heal the sick, and perform miracles. Uh, Mark 16, 17, and 18 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So we have access, amen, one of the benefits uh, to the kingdom is access to divine authority and power. Amen. We can operate in authority of Jesus Christ to over overcome all spiritual battles. We can lay hands on the sick. They shall re recover. And we also can perform miracles. Also, we have a man uh, benefit of answered prayer. Uh, using the keys of prayer and faith, believers see their prayers answered and experience God's intervention in their lives. Uh, John 15 and seven says this, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you, amen. So we have a key, amen, that operates, amen, using this key of prayer and faith, believers see their prayers answered and experience God's intervention in their lives. And many of us can attest that we need God's intervention in our lives like never before, in our church life like never before. And John 15 and 7 tells us, if we abide in him, in my word, abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Uh, my third point on um, a benefit is spiritual freedom and deliverance. Spiritual freedom and deliverance. The keys enable believers to bind and loose spiritual forces, bringing freedom from bondage and deliverance from evil. Matthew 16 and 19 once again reads, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever shall thou bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So once again, we have spiritual freedom and also um, in deliverance, amen. This key enables us as believers to bind and loose spiritual forces, um, 
divine and loose spiritual forces, bringing freedom from bondage and deliverance from evil forces. Matthew 16, 19. Philippians uh, 4 and 19 tells us, amen, uh, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So another key is God provides for us kingdom, pro kingdom provision and blessings, amen. When, bless when believers seek first the kingdom of God, all their needs are met according to God's riches and glory, according to Matthew 6, 33 and Philippians 4, 19 reads, but our God, my God, shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So we have kingdom provision and kingdom blessings. Glory to God. I hope you receive that. We have kingdom provision and blessings. Matthew 6.33 is our foundational scripture for this class. Amen. We believe in to seek God, seek Jesus and to seek God in his kingdom first and all his righteousness and all the things that we have need of shall be added. Also, a, a benefit of kingdom keys is peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Peace and joy, amen, in the Holy Ghost. Using the keys to align with God's kingdom brings peace that surpasses all understanding and joy in the Holy Ghost. Romans 14, 17. Uh, Philippians 4 and 7 says, in the peace of God, amen, which uh, passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. So as we uh, close out on tonight, talking about kingdom authority tonight, amen. These are uh, some of the keys and benefits, amen, that come along, amen, with kingdom authority. These benefits demonstrate the transformative power of living under the principles and authority of God's kingdom. Amen. Once again, these benefits demonstrate the transformative power of living under the principles and authority of God's kingdom. Amen. We want to stop right there. Next week, we'll pick up uh, lesson two. Uh, we continue on a uh, series on living a kingdom principle life. And I pray that something was said to bless you on tonight. So at this time, before I um, place in the hands of our pastor for closing uh, remarks, um, would anybody like to share what they got out of the lesson on tonight um, and how uh, you want to apply these principles? Uh, yes, Ricky. Another thing that you did cover was how it's a chance to exercise our faith. Mm -hmm. So I'll be getting a spiritual workout going forward. Amen. Keep this that's what it is. That's what you. That's what we're doing. We are exercising our faith. Amen. To believe God for all that He has for us. Amen. That is exercise. Yes. Because you get stronger. Amen. You uh, exercising that muscle of faith, and as you exercise that muscle of faith, it gets stronger, and then you believe God for the supernatural. Amen. And um, we all can uh, maybe attest to how. God blessed us with something that we set our faith to, and God honored it because we didn't um, set our faith on something outside of his will, but we exercised, exercised that faith within his will and the desires, amen, that are permitted in heaven, we was able to pull down and operate in our lives, amen. So we are exercising faith in his word, amen. Anybody else would like to share before I um, turn you into the hands of pastor what they got out of the lesson on tonight? Amen. Amen. If not, I'm going to uh, uh, place in the hands of pastor uh, for closing remarks. And then after that, we will do our um, announcements at that time. Well, amen. 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 We thank God for the lesson on this evening. And for each of you that are here, it was an awesome lecture. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I have plenty of notes. I was taking plenty of notes. And I thank God for you know, the authority that has been given to us and the fact that we have to exercise that authority. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, you know, have rights and don't realize that they have rights. You know, mm -hmm. um, they people can have so much money in the bank, but yet <laughs> they don't have, they, they don't seem to know the access to get to the bank, to get the money. 
So we have to know what we have in Christ, who yeah. we are in Christ. And uh, and I like the benefits, the benefits of, uh, of the kingdom principle, you know, mm -hmm. the authority that he has given us, the fact that we can ask and we shall receive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, to to operate in kingdom principles, we need to make sure that we work the word and mm -hmm. allow the word to work for us. And as our faith is built up, our faith is being built up as we hear the word. So yeah. faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. And I just think it's so um, miraculous when you look at that little seed mm -hmm. and the, the results of such a huge tree from a tiny seed. Yes. You know, and when we think about the seed that's in us, mm -hmm. we might be considered minute and nothing. But because of that seed of Christ that's in us, we can become gigantic. Yes. Just like that yes. tree. And yes. God can use us mightily. Mm. You know, so when you think about those principles, the, the fact that we can bind and loose. Yes. We, we choose to settle in oppression. We choose to settle in, you know, mm. uh, low, well, low self-esteem or whatever the yes. enemy is talking to us in our ear about. We choose it because mm -hmm. we have the authority to pull it down, you know, because what happens in our lives is that when we listen to the lies of the devil so long, those things become a stronghold. Yeah. Now you have more to deal with because you didn't bind it and, and, and get rid of it in the beginning. And now it has become a stronghold. So it pays us to immediately, when we feel and sense a spirit that doesn't yes. seem to be a God that's not settling in our spirit, that we have to use those keys immediately and say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I take authority over, you know, yes. whatever it is. If it's oppression, depression, loneliness, whatever it is, we can nip it in the bud. Yes. Because of the fact that we can use kingdom principles to do so. So yes. I just thank God for the lesson. I, I enjoyed it. I'm, I'm getting a lot out of it. And I just want to use it because even on yesterday when I, that man came and just knocked our fence over, that, that retention pond, I literally, when Destiny called me and told me what had happened, I thought about our women's fellowship on Saturday. And the lesson in the book that we have is talking about uh, worship and rejoicing. The lesson was talking about rejoicing. Rejoice always. And think on the things that are honest, pure, just, noble. So I said, Lord, I just went to the church driving and thanking him. And then, yes, you yes. Know, rather than to get all shook up, because we know the devil is mad, because you can see God is at work. The presence of God is so at restoration. Yes. He doesn't want it. So he's trying everything on every hand. But mm -hmm. we're not victims, but we're victors because of the kingdom of God. Wow, yes. I didn't think yes. all of that. God sure not spoke for me. That's the anointing. That's what we needed, yes. Pastor. Yes. Glory to God. Lord, if you only knew, I said, wow. Open your mouth. As, as that prayer was in one of those lessons, Lord, as Paul was praying, Lord, pray that I will, that my utterance will be with boldness. And then I yes. just speak and let you just open my mouth and Lord, let you do the speaking. So we just yes. thank God. For you and for the lesson and for all the remarks and yes. Were you done, Pastor? You dropped out. Oh, I oh I said just I just said to everyone to be encouraged. No. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you, uh Pastor, for those uh encouraging words and letting the Lord use you to close us out. I'm gonna um share my screen one more time for our church announcements and then we're gonna go from there. Amen. Before we close on tonight, um, if you are viewing this broadcast and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, uh, we never uh, close out a, um, a meeting without um, offering Jesus Christ to you. As stated, Jesus Christ is that key that will get you into um, the presence of the kingdom, amen, and get you in right standing with our Father God. Um, where Adam and, and uh, fell, amen, Jesus 
was able to overcome the hands of the enemy and made a way for us to be reconnected with our Father God. The Bible um, and the scripture I'm sharing on the screen with you all um, in Romans 10, 9 and 10, it tells us that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man, man believeth unto salvation, unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you would like to be saved and you would like to come into right standing with God through Jesus Christ, you can repeat these words after me. And the Bible tells us that you will be saved. Also, if you found yourself in a backslidden state, Jesus Christ is still standing there with open arms, open arms and will welcome you back into the kingdom. You're not dismissed because of a failure. You can repeat these words after me and Jesus will welcome you back into the kingdom as well. You can repeat these words after me. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sins and that you raised him back to life. I want to trust him as my savior and follow him as my Lord. Guide my life and help me to do your will. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you just quoted that um, after me, the Bible tells us that you are saved. The kingdom of heaven is rejoicing. Amen. Also, we at Restoration is re are rejoicing for this new life that you in, are going to embark on. If you would like more information, you can reach out to us at RCF Church, um, rcfchurch.org. rcfchurch.org and go to our email page and email us. Or you can just put something right in the chat window and Facebook or on YouTube. And we definitely get you out some information um, with this new walk you're about to, to walk on. I think I just said this uh, just recently. Amen. It's the best decision that you could ever make. And that decision is better than um, uh, life itself because you just accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Amen. Uh, church announcements for this week are as follows. We have Time of Restoration Radio broadcast. Amen. Every uh, Thursday, 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. on WTMRradio.com, 800 a.m. radio, rcfchurch.org. Also, um, we are on Apple Podcasts as well under Time of Restoration radio broadcast. Uh, our pastor is in a series called Stay Free, Part 9. I come from Galatians chapter 5, was telling us to stay free in the liberty which Christ has uh, provided for us. Amen. Um, it's a dynamite series. Amen. It, it, um, I learned something the other day that we even got to stay free from gossip and uh, uh, backbiting and, and pulling down. Amen. Um, please tune in <laughs> to these next few lessons. They're going to be a blessing to you. Pastor, uh, stay free. Part nine tomorrow, uh, 10 a.m., 8 p.m., WTMRradio.com. Also on our church webpage starting at 10 a.m., uh, rcfchurch.org, and also on our Apple podcast. Uh, time of Restoration, Stay Free, Part 9. Uh, this Saturday, this um, coming Sunday is Communion Sunday. Uh, we will be partaking in communion after um, the service uh, on this coming Sunday. Uh, we look forward to all those that are and um, can make it out, someone out this Sunday, and we can um, uh, receive communion together. Amen. Also, coming up um, on August 18th, uh, more information is going to come on that and publication for that. Uh, we're looking forward to our family and friends day, Sunday, August 18th. Amen. Uh, please mark your calendars. Family and friends day, Sunday, August 18th. Um, I think it's going to be an awesome time. The last three that we did uh, on under the um, theme of connections, uh, uh, staying connected and um, being connected. Amen. It's, it's just an awesome series. And I think this year, I think is be the connection, if I'm not mistaken. So we're just looking forward to our Family and Friends Day, Sunday, August 18th. Amen. Uh, ways you can be a blessing to restoration if you would like to uh, give. You were blessed by the, um, what you um, heard on tonight. Uh, you heard on previous Sunday morning services um, or uh, about other Bible studies. Uh, you can reach out um, on our cash app, dollar symbol RCF Church SJ, dollar symbol RCF Church SJ. Um, also on our webpage as well, rcfchurch.org, we have a giving tab there. If you would like to um, be a blessing to restoration, uh, the Bible tells us God loveth a cheerful giver. Uh, your money is not being wasted, um, but it, it will be going to uh, build the kingdom of God. If you would like to donate, uh, those are the two ways that you can donate. Cash app, dollar symbol rcfchurchsj, uh, rcfchurch.org under our giving page. Amen. 
If you would like to know more information about this beautiful church that is um, being shown on your screen, you can go to rcfchurch.org, rcfchurch.org. Um, all the information, uh, um, bios, uh, church history, uh, pastor's information, it's all there under rcfchurch.org. You can go there and gather more information. If you would like to view previous um, Bible studies, Sunday morning services, amen, um, you can go to uh, uh, Facebook page, RCF. Uh, CSJ, RCFCSJ. And if you would like to view messages and Bible study, you can go to our YouTube page as well, RCF Church SJ, RCF Church SJ. Um, please like or subscribe to our pages um, and become a, a follower. Sub subscribe. We're not trying to promote anything but the, the, the love of Jesus Christ. So please like or subscribe to our pages and messages and sermons as well. If you would like to visit us in person, you can visit us at 403 Andrews Road, 403 Andrews Road, Sickleville, New Jersey, 08081. Uh, we would look forward to seeing you um, in the house and not just online. Uh, if you live in the uh, Delaware, P Pennsylvania, New Jersey area, uh, we will we will work, welcome you uh, into the house of God. Amen. Those are our announcements for today. At this time, um, I have a volunteer to close us out in prayer, and um, I thank everyone for joining. So do I have a volunteer? No volunteers? Oh, okay. You can go ahead, Ricky. Okay. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord God. We thank you for this teaching, Father God that we have received on how to live out your kingdom principles, Lord God, in a practical way, Father God, in the name of Jesus and in a doable way, Lord, we thank you, Father. We thank you for the teacher on tonight, Lord God. We thank you for our pastor, Lord God. We um, ask you to recover them both with their health and strength, Lord God, replenish both of them for all they pour out during the week, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We lift up Restoration Christian Fellowship Church to you, Lord God, oh God, and exercising our authority, Father God, we bind the hands of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus, God, and we loose your power, your spirit, Lord God, unity, peace, Lord God, mm -hmm. Yeah. Love, loving one another, loving others, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we don't want to be that light that's hidden, Father God, on the top of the hill, Lord God. But we want our lights to shine, Lord God, not to brighten ourselves, Lord God, but to bring you all the honor and all the glory, Lord God. We want to draw others unto you, Lord God. You wish that none would perish, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. So we lift up the sick to you, Lord God. We bind sickness in the name of Jesus, God. Those that are facing homelessness, Lord God, we ask you to send them resources, God, that you are our provider, Lord God. Those that worry, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to settle their hearts, Lord God. The brokenhearted, Lord God, we ask you to heal their broken hearts, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Everything that concerns anything among us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we lift up the daycare to you, Father God, yeah, in the yeah. name of Jesus. Yeah. Those children are getting a strong foundation in you, Lord God, and the enemy is mad in the name of Jesus. Those little hearts and souls, Father God, those seeds that are being planted, Lord God, are going to get watered and they're going to grow, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, Father, we lift up their families, the parents, Lord God. Anything that's out of order, Lord God, we ask you to put it in order, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Oh, God, we just thank you for the hearers and those that will hear this in the future, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We bless, ask you to bless anything that concerns them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, as we surrender to you, your will and your way, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, so we just thank you once again for your kingdom principle life, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We're gonna live it, God. We're gonna learn it. We're gonna exercise it, Lord God, and we're gonna live it and share it, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you once again, God, 
Oh God, we give you all the honor, all the glory, Father God. We rejoice today and always, Lord God. We yes, will rejoice yes. in every circumstance and every situation, Lord God. Oh God, we just thank you on tonight, God. We thank you for today, Lord God. There was so many that didn't wake up today and not going to see this evening, not going to wake up tomorrow, Lord God. But we're here and we're able to share your word in the name of Jesus. We just thank you. We give you all the honor all the glory in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, Sister Ricky, for that beautiful prayer closing us out. Amen. I want to thank everyone for joining our class on tonight. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you and his grace and mercy continue to travel with us all, all the days of our lives. I'm Elder Kenneth Jones saying have a great night and take care. Thank you for joining the class on tonight. Have a good, good night. night. Good night.